Okay, so for the next thing I wanna go over with Mini 2 is how to do a complete scan. And this is relatively easy. There's two options. The first one is especially simple. For instance, with an example like this, you just keep them stationary. And obviously with Mini 2, you're not gonna be doing as much lifting up and moving, so you really have to learn how to do this. So just do a full revolution around as he's sitting on the turntable, but there's gonna be some parts that are gonna have holes in it. For example, possibly a little bit on top of his head, underneath here where it curves, there should be some holes, and of course on the bottom where you didn't scan whatsoever. So all we're gonna do is do the full scan, pause the video, pause the software, flip the image or the, the model on its side, and then start up again. And there'll be, don't panic because there will be an alignment error for maybe a second, but then the software will automatically find where you left off. It'll pick up the previous point clouds that you've already collected and be able to continue scanning around these areas that you did not catch originally. So let's first do it that way. Then I'll explain the second way after that, that we can get a complete scan. So let's try it out. I'll turn the LED on. I have the depth camera on auto. It's coming out really nice. Base removal, I'll just turn that off. And let's see how it goes. Okay, and then pausing it, as we look at the point clouds that were captured, a little hole on the top of the head, because it didn't capture there. Actually did pretty good here. Pretty much captured everything, but on the very bottom, of course, nothing was captured. So just flip it over again. Make sure where you start up again, this one's pretty easy because it pretty much captured the whole model relatively well. So you ultimately can start your scan anywhere besides at this angle because at this angle would just be facing the bottom. But anywhere else, start, start, start would all be okay. Let's see how the software picks it up. So just click start again. Found the alignment immediately. Make sure you adjust the angle of the scanner a little bit. All right, pause it. Now let's have a look at our model. Yeah, pretty good, no more holes. As you can see, originally the head was missing a spot. And of course, the bottom here had nothing. So that is one way to scan a complete item. I'm gonna show you the other way in a second. Okay, so now for the second way of scanning a complete object. The first way was easy. It was just a matter of stopping it, pausing the video, pausing the scan, and then restarting it. And the system automatically, software automatically picked up where you left off. Next way has a few more steps, but not too bad. And you're gonna have to learn this for items that have a little more features and shapes to them, like this one, for instance. So as we're scanning this, no doubt, there's gonna be holes down here. There might be a hole up top, hole at the bottom, but it's not too bad merging. So first of all, I wanna catch more of the top portion. So we'll just do a normal scan, turn the LED on. Don't need to worry about the base removal because I'm just catching the top here. And let's start it. And I might raise this up a little bit just because I do actually want to be able to see the top. All right, pause. Now looking at our image, just a little hole at the top, not the worst, but obviously right here, lots of holes. So that's fine. So we just take this now and complete that. And then that'll save it, you, that'll save it in your project window as your first model. Okay, so now go to new scan. And we're gonna take this and flip it upside down, but of course, it's not sturdy, so you can grab something else, just to anything really to hold it. And now the scanner is gonna be coming at it from the upper angle. So that area previously that had all holes, now we can catch that and get it really nice. 
but just make sure that you're still capturing a little bit of what you previously did scan because then when the software has to automatically merge it, it needs to have some overlapping point clouds, just like single shot mode as well. Pretty much when you take a single shot, turn a little bit, it has to cap capture at least 30% of the previous point clouds, but we should be good with this. Adjust it so it's right. Start the scan. All right, it's revolved completely around. Got the 360 angle. And of course, there's nothing you can do about the top there. That's gonna have a hole no matter what. But now it's just a matter of, again, complete this particular scan. And then you're gonna see in your project window that you have two models. The first one we did of the top and the second of the bottom. So then we should just have to push merge, right? Well, as you see, when you push merge, then there's nothing you can select in your project window. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's go back and just make sure that you run it through the fusion process. So with our first model, the top, let's fuse it, apply, and make sure your point distance is the same on both of them. So this one automatically was just at 0.10. On your second model, you're gonna to wanna to keep the point distance at the same. There we go. But as you see, it's got those holes, no problem. Now go to the second model, fuse that, make sure it's at point 10. Okay, it's already at point 10 when it comes to the point distance. Apply. Cool, pretty nice. Just has the hole right there, but there's nothing we can do about that. So now we have two, the two images ran through Fusion. Now when we click Merge, notice what happens. We got the two available in the project window. So just like it prompts us to do, select the two boxes. And here, okay, I wanna bring this out. You can, on the right side, you see that for merging, there's feature or marker. Feature is what we just did because we didn't use marker mode. Pretty much the software is going to find the already scanned point clouds and merge them together automatically in the software. If we would have chosen marker, obviously we would need to have marker dots over our model and it's more of a manual option. You would click the marker dots on the one, click the marker dots on the other, and then fuse them. But we're just going to go with feature, seeing how I didn't put any marker dots on. And it's just a matter of, let's see if it gets it right. Right now it has this going on. <laughs> Preview alignment. And it should fix it. Nice, pretty good, honestly. So there we go. I took the two and merged it together, blended it together, really nice. So then it's just a matter of generate model. Awesome. And now you'll see in your project window you have merge one. So then you can continue the editing process. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go and mesh it. Apply the mesh. Looking better. Next, isolation. There's really not gonna be any isolation on this one, but we can still run it, detect any isolation if need be. Fill holes, this will be helpful because there's just a little bit at the top and obviously this bottom, which has already the hole on it. So we'll seal that off. Detect the holes. Just fill that in. Apply. Nice, fill that in good. 
And there we have it. There's our merged 3D image. Not too bad. Just a matter of we got the two options. The first one again, just pause the scan, flip it on its side for an object that has a little more contour to it. We can merge it and that's a few more steps, but not too bad either. But the end result is great.